Well, let's speak to Nikos Sotirikopoulos, uh, a sociologist at York St. John University. Hello to you. Sorry about the pronunciation. Hopefully I was almost there. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to talk to you. Um, how seriously should we be taking the alt-right in the United States? Look, if we see it in terms of numbers, for example, they are way a way smaller movement than we thought. And let's put this into perspective. For example, Ku Klux Klan has approximately 5,000 members. Now, Ku Klux Klan in the 20s had 5 million members. Or if we take the new face of white nationalism, the so-called alt-right, uh, the leader of the alt-right, Richard Spencer, and his, uh, and his uh, group, has something like 13,000 followers in YouTube. Now, again, put into perspective, some weird conspiracy theorist who claim that uh, Kenya West is, I don't know, an, an Illuminati agent of the devil, has more than one million followers. So this movement, if we see it as, let's say, a phenomenon in the internet and in terms of the outreach it has, it's very, very small. And even last year's protest in Charlottesville, uh, this was supposed to be the biggest gathering of white nationalists in a generation. It gathered 500 people only. But the good thing out of the tragedy of last year is because these people saw their, their racist and their ugly face, more and more people around the wider populist right distance themselves for, for them. So I think that the alt-right is basically dying. It's a movement that was anyway small, but now it's even smaller. It, ma it has already done some damage. For example, it gave this space for some horrible views to have this supposedly new and edgy platform. And it has definitely damaged the wider conservative movement because it has given to its opponent a boogeyman to base their attacks on. But I think it's a movement which is very small and actually in decline. But um, so extreme to be isolated, but the traffic to uh, web political magazines, um, including the alt-right, are measured, as you know, and the traffic to the, the alt-right magazines is comparable to those of left, right and centrist opinion ones. Well, first of all, a lot of the buzz around the, the alt-right and a lot of the interest that the alt-right attracts has to do with the counter-protest and, and the media attention itself. So it's not so much that this movement has a falling in itself. It's more like this movement has created an atmosphere around it and has created an image that it is way more dangerous than it really is. And this is definitely related to how even the president of the United States has been linked to this movement. And this is because uh, last year, after Charlottesville, Trump did not condemn the alt-right as strongly as he should. Of course, he did this a bit later. But in the eyes of a lot of people, the Trump, which means a countercultural figure in the American right, who wants to be transgressive, who wants to be provocative, who wants to be edgy, is the same is a, is a result of the same cultural atmosphere that gave rise to the alt right. But actually, if we think about it, they both are more the result of a wider culture that is really, really obsessed with things like tribal thinking or identity. And this has taken over not only the American right, but also the American left. So I see this phenomenon more as a sad outcome of this general culture rather than something like the lynch mobs of the racist of the 20th century resurfacing. Fascinating stuff. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us on Sky News this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.